you able to see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, what is yes. it? Yes, communication sir. language. Does it say that? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Able to see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So we are going to talk about first about body language. How important it is, and how you know how a lot of times we tend to overlook this very important aspect of communication, which is also, as sir said, a part of non-verbal communication. We don't speak, but the impact that it creates on the opposite person is phenomenal. So. Just to share with you, how do we communicate with body language effectively? I'm going to show you visuals and I'm going to ask you to interpret what it means. Okay, so I'm showing you some visuals. So in the first visual, what do you see? Ishan Gishin is angry on the aggression. Yeah, okay. There is some altercation between them. What is it? What is he expressing? Aggression. 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 Anger. Anger. He's using what? Aggression. He's making use of what here? Aggressive facial expressions. Yeah, but he's also using words, right? At the same time? Yes. Like, right? yes. Okay. So he may they may be aggressive, they may be whatever, but he's using words, right? This yes. is from the famous movie uh, Mr. India. And yes. this person speaks this uh, particular dialogue in a particular manner. And that is how the tone comes out, right? The way you speak, the pitch of the of the the tone, the you know the uh, your volume, the the depth of your voice, you know of the way you speak. So, for example, this this person actually says "mogambo kushua." So that's the impact the tone makes. Apart from the the words that he speaks, the way it is being said, and the pitch, the depth, all that. And the third one is the the gesture, which is the hand gesture, which is tennis, this tennis player is showing. Okay, so but communication comprises of words, tone, and gestures. Okay, these three things. Okay, here we are saying, just for your understanding, that whatever you you understand from somebody saying, the words have only seven percent ability to understand. You know, which for what we thought was most important, and we put a, give a lot of emphasis on words. Words out of a total of 100% communication impact, the impact is of words is only 7%. Okay. Then I'm going to show you a video in a while, but look at the ability of how you say the words. So if the words are said in a particular manner with excitement or with any impact or with any high pitch, then that becomes the tone. And that is the ability to understand what the other person becomes 38%. So with words and the tone, the way you speak the words, they, they totally comprise of 45% of communication. Okay. Sign language to be more specific. Yeah. So when you say body language, it comprises of what all comes in body language. And there you are. Facial expressions, whatever we express through our face, eyes, lips. Okay. Your posture, the way you stand, the way you sit, the way you are, uh, you know, you maintain your posture. Hand gestures, you know, when we use our hands, when we speak. And space proxemics. But space proxemics actually going to tell you the social norms of how close or how far you need to be from each other. Okay, so we'll come to the first picture on this and it shows the facial expressions. What do you see over here? Weirdness. Yes. Slight shock, curiosity. Okay, do you see any anger on the face? No, no. Slight anger. Slight. A little bit of oh, the anger and confused. Yeah, so for a moment you have to forget that this guy is a comedian. But if you look at the face individually, do you see anger on the face? And what is expressing the anger? Where can it's you the see eye. the anger? Eyebrows. Eyes. Yeah, eyes eyes. 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 Right, exactly. Eyebrows. So on our in our on our facial expressions, our eyes and our lips make the maximum uh, expression. So this is uh, on the facial expression part. The posture. Let's talk about the posture. When you stand erect and lean forward, interpersonal relationships occur when you face each face your listener while speaking. So this is the perfect posture that you need to maintain when you are talking. Okay, in communication. 
uh what about use of hand gestures a lot of times if you're standing erect and not using your hands you may perceive to be boring and stiff so time and again uh, there is a you know you can use your hands and hand gestures are recommended to be used so that you can exp- your your you can express whatever you're saying through your hands okay now on the space proximity this is just for your information i'm going to share this okay the cultural norm dictate that a comfortable space distance and when you interact there's a distance with each other so the the red zone is basically the intimate zone the yellow is the personal and the blue is the social zone so the intimate zone is basically only family that would be your spouse or your mother father your you know if you married your children so that's the intimate place personal place belongs to your friends people you know your colleagues where you work or let's say you join college the the college and then you have uh, roommates or you have uh, people studying together those are the that's the personal space so the distance maintained between each other is about up to 4 feet and then comes the social space where you know you meet people when you see each other but you don't know each other so for example you guys are mba students but uh, there is also a bba class in the in universal an undergraduate program where the students are you may not be interacting directly with them but you see them on the campus so but there may be sometimes you will be interacting so that sometimes they may be in a personal zone and other time they may be in a social zone are you with me are you all with me yes sir yes, yes, sir. yes, last, yes sir so last public zone which is meant for yes, for celebrities and you know personalities or political personalities who maintain that by kind of distance like 4 12 feet and above they also require to maintain this because they are uh, you know public figures they may require to maintain because of security uh, protocol etc so this is the space okay now i'm going to show you some pictures i need one of one by one just tell me what this person when he, because we talked about body language and what is this person thinking so when you see the picture tell me what is coming to your mind okay and please do that one by one so we can register that is that okay can i move ahead yes sir yes sir okay great okay we have 120 participants so if we all speak at one time there will be dip, then it will be difficult so just one at a time tell me what does this mean what do you see when you see this person confused deep thought thinking okay. something deep thought thinking seriously deep serious of the situation something thinking what to be one we all agree thinking, thinking, thinking about is not particularly good okay is he distressed or distressed is the thinking casual or intensive intense intense sir he is thinking about his next move okay. analyzing his thoughts sir what are the gestures that are showing you about that he is thinking he is suspicious the, the lines on the forehead critical thinking about something serious okay. eyes and hands okay let me show you what what it shows over here he is thinking about the next move someone of you said that let me see so he is thinking about yes, the next sir, move right okay good pondering is in deep thought so he's pondering about something thinking we all said thinking right so and last one what is the considering what to do to do or not to do whether whatever he is thinking he is thinking in sense whether he should do it or not do it the next one is a little difficult but i'm going to show it to you and then let's see what the reaction comes what does this mean lending a hand to help Sir, asking for help asking for help asking for help, help. For help. For help. For help. Uh, giving help you into something oh, oh, just like a trap i have registered one sec i have registered oh, asking for help i have registered giving help what else uh, sir uh, sir it's a trap it's suggesting Maybe something trying to figure it out so it ca- it can be like it will uh, hand to guide you into something it can be positive or negative it's definitely okay. a trap sir it can be an opportunity also it can be okay. seen okay. as an opportunity that's good any other reaction inviting also okay asking someone to uh, give anything to him okay good so to I join hand to basically what is can i help okay the hand also signifies the element of trust okay yeah. trust me okay we when you give a open ha- palm to somebody you're saying trust me okay you're actually going reaching out to the person and saying i'm here to help so trust me you're in good hands that could be the another thing okay 
helping hand so asking for help also willing wanting to give help okay let's can we move to the next one yes sir yes okay, sir look at this yes sir failure broken like tired and lost. in pain tired in pain also tried and was unsuccessful what's so different about this person other than the other other person is talk about depressed today is exhausted tired okay yeah, but what what does it what what does it signify is what is the point depressed due to failure rejection aggrieved about taking a break grief nobody answered my question what is he wearing uh, lost the baby for the juicy uh, so, uh, the feeling of loss i mean he is a sports person sports person very good okay soccer uniform uh, american football okay regretting soccer, lost the game what else not happy with his whole performance not happy with his performance disappointed okay good let's see that what happens he is dejected okay He is dejected about what happened. Okay, he is disappointed. That's I could true. have done. It. I could have done it better, but he is disappointed. Lost it. We all talked about lost. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, observe both the facial gestures and the hand gestures. Okay, he is trying to st- uh, tell someone to stop some uh, something or. Else. Like okay. Do not interrupt. So he wants to prove fire. his proving point. Give me a moment. Influence. Wants to speak something about. He wants to say something, and he's trying to get the other person to stop. Shouldn't I be saying that he needs a moment, like uh, just stop and let me speak, kind of a thing? Okay. Okay. I like the involvement. Somebody else. Thing of continuing, uh, continuing something. Okay. Let's look at him. Now just stop that. all of you said that he is uh, wanting somebody to stop okay get out of here okay the hand is also showing that i don't want anybody here please to leave okay see a lot of times some of these gestures uh, show signs of you know they are actually uh, gestures which which mean more than one thing okay but as we get deep into this topic of communication you will be able to better identify you know how this works so when we talk about the next uh, module on listening we'll better understand how this thing works okay defensive where do we see the defense he defending himself in the hand of uh, and hand, hand gesture by exactly the open mouth represents that is trying to say something an open mouth which is saying something right someone else can someone else is proving his point opposing something right so he is defensive at the same time he is also opposition okay the next one is a little tough one but i think you should get it by now that you guys have become champions on this it looks like she's trying to present something uh, maybe she's saying like is it this perfect more of a comic she's, she's opening right? that she's trying to express something but uh, she can't just figure say it. something she is curious about something she is curious watch, you have to watch the hands in tandem with the with the face open to feedback she's questioning like something i mean uh, she can't particularly understand it but all, uh, at the same time it's kind of like uh, she's happy about it it could be like a pleasant surprise to her can be okay what it's else curious. it looks like she's introduced something which she th- is really excited about and wants to she's say, happy yes, for something opinion. Okay. she is happy for something someone else she is maybe product or product okay. presenting a product or something okay. like that i think we'll we'll have to let's take a look let any 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 last comments she is open to feedback she has been sarcastic she's only presenting something she's open somebody said she is open one sec she is open to listening right yes yes sir. okay good tell me more she wants to know more so the hands which are open up like this and the face smiling asking for more information open that's why i asked who was who said the word open she is open to listening okay accepting okay welcoming okay so this particular hand gesture and the face smile is also welcoming okay so we done on the body language i'm going to take you now into another topic so let's talk about effective and active listening okay see if i'm i'm making this noise 
it's coming to your ear but you're not listening you're hearing it right there is a there's some background uh, voice or some background uh noise is happening you know actually don't listen to everything listening is what listening is that you're listening something and then you're understanding what is being said and then responding to whatever that is whatever is being said but this will be very important for you now when you attend your lectures and your classes but more than that you know listening actually will help you all throughout your life because if you are an effective listener you'll be able to have, and most of your problems will be solved in whichever field you are maybe in hr finance you know analytics wherever you are listening will always help okay so let's move to this activity uh, sorry let's move to listening what is the power of listening is saying you receive a message understand the message and respond to the message appropriately so what are we doing we're taking whatever is in the input of the messages you processing that input internally and according to that input you're actually giving a response okay so listening is a mental activity we all agree is that right it is a mental yes, activity sir. yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes. So what's the difference between i hear you but i am not listening uh ट्रेशन Look at what the breakup. So unconsciously listening, I can say is hearing, and consciously is listening. That is right. So in listening, actually the understanding what the person is saying, and in hearing you only hear it. Okay. Sir, hearing includes only ears, and listening includes ears and mind. Okay. So there is a saying, you know, God gave us two ears and one mouth. What does that mean? Listen. We should listen, listen more. We should listen, listen more. Listen more. Listen more. Talk less. Also, also, your your ears will not get you into trouble. What does that mean? What you hear will not cause you trouble. If you say something, something wrong, you might end up in trouble. If you if you talk more and if you not do not able to say the right thing, you might get into trouble, right? But listening never got anybody into trouble, right? Speaking, right? you can offend someone. Listening, you can ask. Yes, sir. Exactly. Okay, let's move ahead. Can we move ahead? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, great. Sir. So look at this chart. The pie chart is showing forty-five percent important in communication is listening. Okay, nine percent writing, sixteen percent reading, thirty percent speaking. But a good forty-five percent of it is listening. Okay, so the importance of listening is as much as the importance of body language. so in communication the immediate part after you say that okay my body language i am observing my body language consciously and at the same time i am listening to what is being said then you are almost you know uh, communicating with whoever you know maybe passive communication maybe active communication but then you are actually there you are physically mentally there spiritually there in that place okay there are three levels of listening passive listening what do you give me an example of passive listening Somebody give me an example of passive listening. Listening to music. Okay, or you know, you are sitting on a, in the class, and two people, two, two or uh, two of the students are talking amongst themselves. So listening okay. without uh, seeing it. So yeah. without paying attention to it. Without, so it's not being said to you, but it is being said in the background. So it's passive listening. You are you are in the in that particular environment, so you are listening to it. Is that it's correct? More hearing and less listening. So you yeah. were you were unintentionally. Thing thing we are unintentionally. Selective, selective listening. What is selective listening? Can you only listen to certain words? Like allow you to concentrating on a certain person when uh, many people are saying something. So you only listen to what what what's in it for you. If you don't you don't listen in. So it's for me as well, for everybody. Like we all what's in it for us, right? We don't listen to the entire thing. So we do a selective listening, and active listening is what you actually do, and that's when you're totally tuned in. Listening and understanding. Listening, understanding, and responding as well. Okay. So what is the difference? Okay. So passive listening, in one ear and out of the other. 
so you heard that and you never even bother to remember it you just it's in one out in from one year and out for the other selective listening it's not important as uh, you listen to what you want to hear and what interests you everything else you forget correct yes sir you all, yes, you all went you all went to graduate school right it happened in graduate school to you all you listen to something that was important to you and you forgot the rest yes sir yes sir yes, yes, sir. yes sir. okay can It's you like relate, this, can relate this this relate this selective listening to your own experience yes sir okay yes, sir. so all the yes, time sir. yeah active listening is what listening and comprehending everything that means you're listening and responding so when you are actually in class you're listening and then up your your involvement shows by your your response yes, yes, yes. when you when your body language and everything the passion in your voice and uh, your body you know and your hand gestures show your involvement your passion that that is being shown over there so uh, along with listening how communication and body language can actually blend into it shall we move ahead yes sir some yes, common sir. barriers to listening okay a lot of distractions people are around noise environment okay boredom you seeing the listening to the same thing again and again so you get bored if i if i'm going to talk about the same thing again and again obviously it's going to be a challenge for to keep your attention you will say okay no i watched this many times i don't want to see it anymore lack of challenge there is no challenge in what is being said okay it's monotonous it's you know something is being said all the time and i i don't think it's it is giving me any any sense of uh, of challenge or any sense of you know uh doing something motivational factor you're not motivated with what is being said boredom anxiety you are personally you are going through something and hence you're not able to listen intolerance you have a prejudice you know or a speech pattern accent you know let's say i am you have you have a class on communication and in in, uh, in ubs and i am talking in tamil and you don't none, none of you understand tamil so what will happen you will not understand what a word of what i am talking about i am just taking tamil as an example it could be marathi or it could be anything else right okay familiarity too many familiar situations presumption so when you are when you get familiar to certain situations then they also okay, again then you you don't have to react because you know what's the re- what's the reaction that happened the first time or so if it's repetitive stuff so some of these barriers are worth knowing so you can you know avoid these barriers while listening what are the steps to active listening you listen you question you reflect paraphrase you agree okay so how does this work can somebody tell me so i think it is a two way process please it's a two way process okay what else So in a lecture, how does it work? So this is a class that is being shown. You are sitting in a lecture. How does it work? Sir, so when we listen, we understand things, and then conscious, our conscious mind, and like have the question, we ask question, then they reflect their answers, and we agree. That's that sort of listening and body gesture also. Okay, somebody else. so uh, if we are in a lecture first we listen to what is being said then if we get a doubt then we question and clarify it and uh, after clarification of doubt we reflect and introspect it in totality okay, and uh, then develop an agreement okay good so it's a process okay we have to follow the process each of the time right step one when you listen you listening to feelings as well as words right when somebody is talking to you is emotions are also speaking so you're listening to the feelings how do you develop rapport is through the feelings and the the body language that is being spoken the passion that is being shown right so when you when you when you come to the mbubs that's the the biggest thing you know when we spoke to you about tell me three things about ubs you all mentioned about global uh, you know it's a it's a it's a global school it's got the best faculty so you know the faculty here is uh, is what is important they get you into a, a mode of you know learning things by doing them you know not just through presentations or not just to books are you with me focusing on the speaker when i say focusing on the speaker what does that mean in simple terms see this is all no body language yeah you focusing on the speaker so now 
you cannot see me you can see me yeah, my video is on but you are seeing at the presentation so what are you focusing on when i am talking to you your voice content matter voice and presentation content what else what else my tone what else audio what really fine and gestures can you feel my emotions when i am speaking yes sir In what manner yes. Yes, your yes, tone. Like a Sorry. So through so your tone, tone, we can feel your emotions. My tone. The is way my, you are speaking. How is my tone? How would you when you say my tone? How would you want to say my tone is? Very enthusiastic, excited. Loud. You present. see enthusiasm. Okay. Very good. Positive. Okay. So it's mostly neutral. Okay. Yeah, what is the speaker talking about? So you, this is also a part of the listening process that you want to know what is he talking about. Why? Because obviously, when if you have to respond to what he is talking about, or you have to give a response to whatever is being discussed, then you need to, you know, understand. Look at the speaker. A lot of times, you know, listening happens when you look at each other. When you're not looking at each other, the listening part of it does not happen one hundred percent. Okay, we're using verbal and non-verbal encouragers, right? nodding your head somebody said right in the very beginning nodding your head smiling looking in i am maintaining a pleasant eye contact these are all non verbal encouragers to each of you you know when you you know you guys don't even know each other but when you come into the college you will be staying some of you will be roommates some of you will be become friends you know and these are some of the non verbal encouragers when you meet someone on the in the campus you know you say oh you part of this class i am in this class too as well my name is so and so you will say my name is so and so and that's how you get to know each other is that correct or no hmm? make sense yes sir okay yes. we now come to yes. questioning okay we now come to questioning there are closed ended questions and there are open ended questions okay anybody can tell me what is a closed ended question sir when we strictly give them one word or one sentence answer like yes or no uh, like i am not interested and all these are okay. the somebody else sir uh, a, a question that has particular answer okay so let me give you an example okay how is the session it's awesome. good sir good okay. informative so very interesting okay it's an open ended question bad this is not this is not is this an open ended question No. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. In a way, it is. If we have no. a review about how, the how is the session? I'm asking for a one word. You'll say good, sir. Okay, no. fine. You know, so the one word. If I ask you the same question in a different manner, how are you liking this session? So then you will give your expression, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So, you, you what asking. happens is when you ask for open-ended questions, you always close-ended questions. They always give you an answer in a one word: yes, no. Okay, fine, good, bad. But when you ask an open-ended question, you're actually opening the door for the other person to speak more. Okay, and it helps when you mark. I think we have about sixty percent of our people who are in marketing. In marketing, you have to practice the open-ended question theme. You're, you know, you you open so many things. You know, when you're actually going out and meeting customers, or even if you're doing direct sales, you know. open ended questions always helps because when you throw an open ended question the person cannot get away by saying one word a yes or a no so let's see okay are you feeling tired now how would, is this a open ended is this is a closed ended question how will you open this question are you feeling tired now i'll say yes or i'll say no okay how will you make it i'll i'll, I'll you do to do this for you and then we'll practice together okay so if i want to make this an open ended question i'll say how are you feeling now So then comes. So we are feeling. Whatever is your feeling, you would say, right? Yes. But to, to this question, are, are you feeling tired now? What is your response? No. Yes. No. No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. But if I ask you a little bit, how are you feeling now? Then how are you feeling now? Then what will you do? You say a little lazy we can uh, elaborate on this you can elaborate you can talk right darling the second one is isn't it a nice day today isn't today a nice day we'll say yes or no yes right? yes sir normally uh, just to give you a hint the open ended question start with how so here if you want to make this an open ended question how will you do it 
sir we can say how's your day going how was the day, how's the day today yeah. how's your going how's your day was the last activity useful you can say yes or no how, right yes okay, if you want yes. to open the question how what, what will you do how was the last was the activity last, ah exactly how was, how was the, the last, last day activity? is there anything bothering you you can say yes or no okay no how will you open this question Here you what can't use how. What, what is bothering you? you? What is bothering you exactly? Right. So everything is fine then. You'll say okay, fine. So here, how will you change this question to an open-ended question? How is everything? How is everything? Exactly. How is everything? Good. Excellent. Okay. Let's go ahead and talk about paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is what stating what the other person said in your own words. So why you want to know? do a paraphrase a lot of times you know when you're in a crowd and you especially let's say you're attending a lecture and you want to and you want to confirm that you understood what is being said you actually repeat so sir you're asking me to respond to uh, you know your question about business communication is that correct so your professor will say yes business communication can tell me what are the various ways of business communication so paraphrasing always helps you know to understand that whatever you heard is you know you heard correctly and you're then giving the correct response when you paraphrase often you'll always develop a habit and that is a good habit to develop you know and some of the techniques you can use paraphrasing when you when you come you know meet each other you can use paraphrases and paraphrasing use phrases are over here some of the ones in other words if you want to express something so you say in other words to reiterate what you said to you know to uh, if i understand what you're saying you know if i've understood you correctly so what are you doing actually you are re reaffirming what is being said and hence you're taking it on from there is that correct it's just an activity and i think uh, no i don't need to you know put more into this when you agree you know confirm and bring about a solution what do you do when you agree let's say you agree to something let's say you agree to do a do an activity or a homework or a or an assignment then what what what, what, what you confirm and bring about a solution so you, what do you say okay so we understand that this assignment is given to us and it is to be done within this time frame and this is what what is the assignment about so you con confirming the two three things that you need to confirm the timeline the the uh, content of the assignment and what reference material you can use for this assignment correct are you all with me yes yes sir yes, what are the other yes, helpful sir. techniques for foster communication yes, here nod your head maintain eye contact keep an open body position what is an open body position uh the leaning towards the listen when yes, open yes, to yes, their yes. thought yeah can you repeat sorry you said something two people were saying so i could not no, no. what is an open body position is important to understand what is an open body position you are smiling throughout smiling yes what else nodding your head what else not holding hands you are not holding hands exactly that was uh, a feel relaxed uh, not fixed not keeping a stiff body posture absolutely yeah not putting your hand on your head you know those are some of the very negative body postures that you normally exactly. have you know? you kneel on your kneeling your hand on the desk that's also not a good body posture okay repeat the last word or two of the prior speaker so what is the, what are you doing you are paraphrasing report a sentence or part of of one make encouraging statements how will you make encouraging statements can me can somebody give me one one quick one we almost done with the session true exactly that's what i was thinking oh my god yeah, exactly okay good excellent i agree with that are you listening Guys, are you listening? Yes, yes sir, we are. Yes, I want all of you to say, "Are you listening?" Yes, sir. Don't hear 120 people saying, "Ah, yes, sir." Oh, are you, you are great. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir